Welcome to another video. I am Dee Dee, a Christian content creator, and I absolutely love making videos to help others come to know God and to grow in their relationship with him. So if this is something that you are needing in your life, like right now, or maybe even yesterday, do yourself a favor and subscribe to my channel for future content. Now today, I will be talking about what it means to come as you are. So for many years, I used to believe like this phrase was meant in a physical sense because I always used to hear it when someone was trying to encourage another person to like come to a church service, like the person be dodging that invitation saying, I don't have no church clothes. Yeah. And they will come back with the come as you are. But as I have grown up, I have come to understand God and his word a bit more. And so it takes on a deeper meaning. Now, before I get any further, let me preference this by saying this phrase is not found anywhere in the Bible, okay? But the meaning of come as you are can be implied from many Bible verses, which I'll get to that in a moment. But I just wanted to say that because I don't need the modern day Pharisees all up in my comments trying to come for a sister, all right? I'm just the messenger, remember? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not. Let me also clear up any potential misunderstanding about this topic. So I want you to make this mental note. Come as you are isn't an endorsement of staying in a state of sin, nor is it about downplaying the seriousness of our sins. And it does not mean that there's no need for personal growth or change. And it does not exclude any personal responsibility. So now that I have gotten all of that out of the way, let me give you three points why you can come to Jesus just as you are. Number one, you can come as you are because you are loved. Romans 3.23 reminds us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So Sin is universal. It says all have fallen short, not some of us or just a certain group of people. It says all. So stop allowing people to make you feel like you can't come as you are because of their judgment of you. Even though we may not all have the same degree of sin, your sin isn't greater than theirs or mine's and vice versa. Sin is sin. So that makes us all like filthy rags who can do nothing to meet God's perfect standard. Now, while we have all sin, sin doesn't define us either. I know a lot of us may still be dealing with lingering shame or guilt from sinful things that we've done. And I know I have, but the good news is our identity isn't based solely on our sinfulness because Jesus forgives and he redeems those who believe in him and repent for their sins. When we come as we are, we aren't hindered by his love because it's so unconditional, regardless of the past or present circumstances. Number two, you can come as you are because perfection is not required. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So let me give you a little context about this verse. So in chapter 11, where we find this verse, Jesus had condemned the cities where he had performed miracles for their lack of repentance. And then he offered a prayer of thanksgiving to the father, acknowledging his authority to reveal truths to those who were seeking God. And in this particular verse, Jesus sends an invitation to the weary and the burden. So Jesus is not asking us to come to him only when we have everything figured out or when we're free from burden. Instead, he's saying, no, bring all that weariness, bring all that brokenness, bring all those struggles to me just as you are so that he can give his yoke, his teachings, his way of living in exchange because his yoke is easier and much lighter than all that we are carrying around. See, God's grace and love are not dependent on our ability to fix ourselves, but on his unchanging character and his desire to bring us peace and rest. And lastly, the reason you can come to Jesus just as you are is because transformation is 
possible. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it tells us, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. So Paul is discussing the ministry of reconciliation and this new life as believers that we have in Jesus Christ. And he's reminding us that when we come just as we are, God won't leave us unchanged. He gives us this fresh start because his grace is transformative. It takes all that brokenness and it turns it into something so beautiful. Now, will we still struggle with sin on our Christian walk? Absolutely, yes. Does this mean we are now these perfect creatures who no longer have room to grow or mature? Absolutely, no. Our transformation is ongoing, y'all, because we aren't free from sin. We aren't sanctified. So God will continue to work on us so that he can change us from the inside out slowly but surely conforming us to the image of Christ. Now, taking into consideration what you have heard, I want you to think about two questions. How does the concept of come as you are challenge your perception of self-worth and acceptance both in the eyes of God and in your daily interaction with others? And in what ways can you embrace the idea of come as you are and how can that lead to a more authentic relationship with God and others? And if you feel led to share your thoughts about these two questions, please do so. Share it in the comments because you never know how your responses may inspire or encourage someone else. So fam, that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. Before I go, here is a friendly reminder. You are loved unconditionally by a God who sees you, who knows you and wants a relationship with you. You don't have to be perfect to come to him. He invites you to come just as you are, knowing that his love has the power to transform your life. Until next time, sincerely, Dee Dee.